wait a minute. Oh, right. There we go. What's that? Right, you on up slowly. And we'll be farting all night again. Typical male. with a beard. Look at that. Fine guard dog you are. How big are these things? No, no, no. I prefer clean air in the bedroom, thank you. See you in the morning. These doors should have been shut ten minutes ago. I'm sorry, Canon. I was on the phone. Close today. them now, before we're all knee-deep in the drinking class's vomit. They're just people going for a night out. Yes, a night out in that place would make Sodom and Gomorrah look like well in Garden City. So make sure they're securely locked. This cannon. After 25 alcohol pops, even a mother superior would take her bra off. Well? Ah, uh, barometric pressure's rising. Oh, hell. No chance of rain tomorrow, then. <laughs> Not a hope. Great. No prospect of getting out of it, then. There's something downloading here. Yeah, check it out. It's from bigbazoomers.com. Oh, God, those are unnatural. Get rid of it. Oh, I thought that might cheer you up. If I want to enjoy digitally manipulated breasts, I prefer it the old fashioned way. What about Judah? More your cup of tea? I mean, your grubby geek fantasy. What's grubby about it? I think I'd have a chance if I spent the day at the zoo with her. You want to go instead of me? Uh-uh. After what I've seen in the net about that place. Well, where was that? Bustygorillas.com. I'm not telling you. You have to be a grubby geek. At least I'll still have my sight. Sleep well. Sleep. It's Friday. The night is still young, my friend. Cannon, is there anything you need me to do before I go out? Go out? Where are you going? It's the monthly social at the Evangelistic Centre. Oh, how scintillating. I did mention it last week. You said it would be all right. Oh, very well. Is everything prepared for tomorrow? Yes, I brought it down to the hall ready for you. Is that all right? I suppose so. You'd better be off then. Mm. But be careful in that place. Too many Ovaltines and there could be a riot. Have a nice evening. Mm -hmm. Heaven preserve us all from Friday night. Gather there's 50 sloppers in there, checking the blusher. No, thanks. I don't want it on my brow. You've pulled already now. I can't leave you for a minute. Over there. He's been eyeing me since I got here. Here? Over there. By the pillar. What do you think? <laughs> a bit of an age difference, isn't that? You're hardly in the first flush yourself, Kirst. It's still early yet. You could do much better. He looks a bit bonkers. I'm going over. Oh, don't. Oh, here's some money for the minicab. Don't get back too early. An hour should do it. You sure? How do I look? Wish me luck. <laughs> Always the bride's night.
Duke, I've got it right here. Oh, thanks, please. Here you go, just here on the back. Special offer tomorrow only, two adults and a child. Oh, that's brilliant. Joey's been crazy me to go for months. Oh, sorry, I can't make it myself, but... Mm, chucking out time. The British public are nothing if not predictable. Friday night, ten gallons of alcohol and a trip to A&E. Okay, what we've got? We've got found in a flat. Massive lacerations above the second rib. Okay, give me a couple of units of colloid and four units cross max ASAP. Can someone give me a surgeon? Probably only your new war button, eh? See ya. The Reverend Mary Truegood is on the phone. Mm. She insists on having a word with you. She says it's something to do with her kitchen. Her kitchen? Don't these women think of anything else? I have a taxi cab waiting. Tell her I may not be back for some time. But and she's... for goodness sake, don't say where I've gone. It'll be broadcast all over the diocese in no time. When will these Harridans realise that most of us joined the church to get away from them? Well, some of them are very good, I hear. On second thoughts, tell her you don't know if I'll be back at all. Let's make sure we've got something concrete for him when he comes back. Why didn't you join in? I'm not buying. John bought it especially for you. Why didn't he join in? in? Uh, It'll be simpler, believe me. I might have to kill you for this. He's just miming them. <sighs> you can... We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about you? You, you, you can come too. You. <laughs> It's all right, madam. It's all under control. No, I have to talk to someone who knows about wildlife. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. The police are on their way. If you could just come back a little bit later. Yeah, no, I can't come back later. I must tell someone what happened right. last night. Oh, what are you doing? I'm getting out of this madhouse. No one's coming in. Don't tell me. I'm not come supporting on. the place. I'm just concerned. Help, that's right. Keep back. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, Can we come back this afternoon? No, Mummy's got to go to work. Oh, what a shame. Hey, I know. Why don't we go and see what Toby can find for you on his computer? Come on, then. It's just dark, Dan. Toby! I brought someone who wants to see what you can do on the net. Why are those ladies undressed? 
You'll understand in a few years when you grow up and become an adolescent. I think we'd better go home now. Oh! Toby was just kidding me. I'm on again at four. We've got to get you ready for Auntie Liz's. Say goodbye to Mr. Strange. Bye. Look, I've been waiting here nearly 15 hours now. Isn't there someone to tell me something? Hasn't someone come and spoken to you? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there's been a panic on since X-ray went down at lunchtime. Everything's backed up. Uh. Can I see her? That's not a good idea. She's lost a lot of blood. No. I found her. She... I'm flatmates. She asked me not to come back too early. I knew that man looked dodgy. I should never have let her. Uh, it wasn't a man. Eh? What was it then? Well, we assumed it was something like a Rottweiler, don't you? We don't have any pets. We're both out all day. Well, we're trying to stabilise her, and we've paid the plastic surgeon to have a look. Plastic surgeon? They can do wonders these days. Look, why don't you go home and get some rest? I think I'll stay a while. Oh, excuse me. You didn't hear him say where he was going. No. Ah. And you're not picking up anything? No. Well, that's something. Black's gone off somewhere. Is there nothing showing up on the instruments? Nope. Can't be anything brewing. Night off. Get rid of all that stuff first. It was a joke. Yeah? Went down really well. Come on, Kev. Might as well go home. Harry said she was ripped apart like a piece of steak. Mm, what was it? Some hard man's dog. Where's the X-rays turned up yet? Mr. Dexter's come to take a look at Natalie Cornish. How is she? Well, I'll do what I can. Looks like a dog. Like that poor girl last month. Oh, here they are. Thank you. Oh, and Dr. Harry asks whether you might have a reassuring word with her friend. She's been here half the night. Uh, yes, by all means.
been going on? I have no idea. What do you need? Nothing. She's dead. Is it possible for a demon to do something in daylight? seconds to get out of here. help if you lock the door, Kirst. the standard hospital cover-up moved into operation and the cause of death will be hemorrhaging as a result of injuries which isn't actually untrue so it looked like she'd been attacked by something i don't know really i didn't see her beforehand but she was certainly well, i would say savaged you didn't see anything in there the door to the fire escape was open but there was no sign of anyone i i don't know it was all such a panic Kevin wasn't picking up anything. But? He's sensitive to the energy a demon releases when it uses its powers. So it couldn't have been a demon? Unless... What? A really clever demon might hold back its powers and spread trouble through something else. Other people? Yeah, possibly. Well, what else? I'm not sure. Deliberately trying to send me bonkers, John. I need to look through a few things. Okay. I have no idea what I'm going to tell the girl's flatmate when she gets back. Just tell her her friend didn't pull through. See if you can find out what she knows. About what? Well, that is rather the question, isn't it? We're going to speak to Addison. This is private property. Mr. Harrison doesn't talk to trespassers. It's all right, Charlie. I'm right here. I cut through the fence. We want a word with you, Harrison. Well, now you've had one. This place is dangerous and should be shut down. 
On what grounds? Well, apart from a zoo being an anachronism in this day and age, three of your keepers have been mauled due to your bizarre animal training techniques. Techniques? Two tigers have already had to be destroyed because you let them roam free at night. Tigers? Oh, so you mean like this one? Bloody hell. That animal belongs in the wild. Leave it, Zoe. You can't win this one. You're insane. <laughs> You better run fast. She's not been fed tonight. Will you, Arthur? Get out of here. You better close up the gap, Charlie. Yes, Mr. Harrison. We've had more than our fair share of that sort of trouble. Sebastian? What's all the fuss about? <laughs> Oh. And all this fuss over a couple of rats. Call yourself a dog. Come on then, where are you? Sebastian? Here, boy. beyond a joke. <sighs> Look out, shouted William, as the dark shape leapt from his locker. But it was too late. The baby griffin's steely claws had already sunk into Cedric's shoulder, bringing a dark stain of blood before he knocked the creature to the floor. Mum. Oh, that's enough for tonight, sweetie. Oh. No, we'll meet the rest tomorrow, OK? Mm. No, no, I love you. <laughs> Night, sweetie. Good night. Hello? Mary. Mary Trugood, to what do I owe this pleasure? Any? Chris, it's Jude Atkins. Oh, hi. That woman this afternoon, has she come back or rung up yet? No. Why? Uh, nothing. I was just worried about something. What's it like there tonight? Quiet. Might even be able to get some sleep. I won't keep you then. Bye. Cheers, bye. Now I used to think of myself as an animal lover. Do you think I should get a rabies shot? Rabies, tetanus, bubonic plague. You are joking. That's how it spread, you know. The fleas on the rats from the Dutch East Indies. Well, I've caught a girl I know. Philippa, she runs a boarding kennel the other side of the village. She keeps a selection of shots, just in case. We're quite close, and I thought... Yes, you do best to get out of here. Sebastian, he can go into the run, and I can bust down her spare bed for, you know, the time being. Anyway, she's actually she's waiting up for us. Actually. Can I keep this lot to examine? Yes, I'll get you a bag. Here we go. And, oh, you might want to uh, get these developed. I took a few shots of everything. Did Earlier. you get a good look at it, then? Well, it was dark. The bulb had just gone. Seriously, what... 
do you think it was? I don't know. Me neither. I've rifled the encyclopedia, said nothing. I even took a trip up to see if I could pick Robert Harrison's brains. I thought, well, he must have heard of something like this. And that's you know, was when I saw you. What did he say? Well, you saw the protesters. Half an hour's drive over there, I never got any further than you did. You said you had a car start up after you forced it outside. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it could have been anyone, and I... I know these vermin get pretty big, but I've never met one that could drive. Haven't you? I meet them all the time. Hey, hey, Kirsty. Hi, Sharma. Where's Roddy? Yeah. Chopped him. Don't know where that come from. It's all right, it's all. Told you. She'd have done the same as us. I mean, I don't think that's really me, Sharma. No, I didn't mean. Listen, I'm just going to the bar. Can I get you one? Whiskey, straight up. I thought it was a marble girl. Yeah, I used to be. <laughs> you were on your own tonight, like me, then. Not really. Looking for somebody. Right. Okay, well, I'll be right back. Knew it. You didn't say if you wanted ice, son. <sighs> oh, what the hell? Hello? Do that. Well, this isn't a social visit, thanks for asking. I thought it probably wasn't. Uh, do you ever think about getting an answering machine? I'm running out of excuses for nighttime babysitters. I had a call from the vicar at All Saints, Mary Trugal. We were ordained at the same time. She's witnessed an incident. What? I was reading to Joey some story about a fantastic wild animal. Oh. Did you come all the way over here just to tell me that? No, no, something else. You know the girl that died? Mm hmm Her friend, she never came back. Oh, can't say I'm surprised. What sort of thing would do this? You want to see? Just lost her a moment ago, sorry. She'd lost too much blood. You get the forms, don't you? Dead on arrival. What have we got here, then? Oh. Another nibbled packet. It's a pity we can only make black and white prints from the colour negatives. They could be clearer. I don't think Happy Snaps would thank us for taking these in. Come on. You can't hurry chemicals, John. Yes. Come on. That's my beauty. <laughs> it's another 20 seconds. Hello? Hold on. Hello? Jude? There's been another one. Exactly the same. Massive lacerations to both sides of the chest. Didn't even make it to the hospital. Oh, no. I just thought you'd like to know. Some bloke found it on the pavement this time, near that club in Castle Street. Called an ambulance. Tell me it isn't the other one's flatmate. Aid isn't. Huh? I don't know who this one is. Sharma Hollands. Well, my brother's coming to identify in a minute. My flatmate still hasn't turned up. No. Has anyone tried ringing the flat yet? The file's gone missing. What? I asked if the managers had removed it because of the death, but no one's seen any sign of it. 
Tini and me, I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled it to destroy the x-rays so the cause of death can't be contested. Listen, I've got to go. Duty calls. Yeah, uh, thanks. All right, well, I need a large one when this is over. You and me both. Bye. Bye. In the late 17th century, a nameless demon arrived in Milan, insinuating himself amongst the population. Seeming innocuous, he posed no danger in himself, but shortly throughout the city there were reports of attacks from hellish creatures, the like of which had never been witnessed before. These creatures soon became known as the Milan Incubi. Panic soon spread, and the people clamoured for protection. But even in the cathedral itself, there was said to be no safety. Where did these things come from? It was said that to grow, the incubus had to be surrounded by human flesh. Some claimed he somehow employed susceptible subjects to do this. Do any of them say how? Well, it goes right out of your mind when you're being burned at the stake. Helpful. Hang on. A few victims insisted to do his work, he somehow caused them to sleep at will. Great. One man, near to death, attested that when cornered, it had finally unleashed its full powers against him. The demon was never identified, and after a while there were no further reports. How much of that is possibly true? It's difficult to say. They were a bit hysterical in the days before the news of the world. The eye is definitely very similar to the one in the drawings, isn't it? Mm. Hello. I was just going past on my way to the chippy, and I thought you. M oh. Jude. I'm sorry about the pics. You weren't really meant to see him. It was. It was sort of a joke. Oh really? It's a good thing you came back. See if you can find anything on the Milan Incubi. Could you? Will do. Are you going on to the hospital tonight? No, I start days as from tomorrow. Well, you could try and track down a missing flatmate. She might have the key to the whole thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Don't worry if I see anything furry. I'll run. Hello, um, I'm calling about Natalie Cornish. I'm a friend. I was wondering. Oh, I was out yesterday evening. Oh, I see, right. No, both the parents are dead. I suppose I should make contact with someone to um, make arrangements. Yeah. Goodbye. There's nothing. I've been looking all bloody night. You said there was stuff on the net about Harrison Zoo. Yeah. Well, can you bring it up? You're not still thinking of going, are you? Well, I just looked at the map. It's half an hour's drive from All Saints on the country roads to the zoo entrance, but the grounds of the zoo back right onto the rectory. There it is. It's put up by some protesters group. It's all down.
If if Jude calls, tell her I've gone out. Oh, can you at least get me cotton and chips first? I'm starving. Come straight back. We might be onto something. I know it's against the cause, Zoe. This is what we've been waiting for. What's your problem? That thing isn't natural. That's the whole point. Genetic experimentation is illegal in this country. It's like a bloody freak show exhibit. Gives me the... Shit! It's bloody special, Branch. It's a plant! Shut up! If you know what's good for you, open up. Who is it? My name is John Strange. I'm interested in animals. I was wondering, when you broke into the zoo to protest, did you go through the grounds of All Saints Rectory? So what if we did? What do you want? Didn't anyone think to get the flatmate's number? Gary took the call. He was in a flap having salad just like that. Plus, God Almighty is about to appear any moment to do his rounds. Well, where's Chris Henry? He's gone to take some air between shifts. He's done 72 hours straight. I've got to get my skates on. My two dogs tear the place to pieces if I don't arrive on time with a tin opener in my hand. See ya. See ya. It's you lot, I might have known. We've got you this time. What do you want? I'm a busy man, I haven't got time to waste baddying insults with ill-informed children. Perhaps you'd rather talk with me. Who are you? Strange. John Strange. We know you import rare animals illegally and keep them in conditions that are wrong for their health. Please, please, I have heard this all before. If that's the only reason you drag me over here, I'll see you in court. No, that's not the only reason. They picked it up yesterday outside the rectory your grounds back onto. He died during the night. We think it probably starved. What the hell is this? Oh, don't try the innocent. You don't recognize it. I swear there is no such animal in the world. I mean, the teeth. She's a reminiscent of a, of the smaller cats, you know, like the awesome one, but the, the eyes. I've only ever seen something like this on birds of prey. You haven't been keeping this creature. What? Oh. There have been several attacks on, on the zebra herd recently, uh, always at night. I mean, we... With, we suspected it was a fox or a, a weasel, but the wounds... The wounds suggested something and with a much, much more powerful jaw. Where did this come from? That's what I'd like to know. that alone. Cannon, I didn't realize you were back. I'm not back. Draw the curtains. The curtains? Quickly. And because I'm not back, you will not answer the telephone to that irritating woman, or anyone else for that matter. But if I don't answer it, how will I know if she's calling? Exactly. 
It's the only way to guarantee any peace and quiet around here. Are you all right, Canon? You look as if you've seen one of those things from your book of demons. What book of demons? The one you told me you'd destroyed. Go away. Yes. Well, I'm sure you'll feel better in a little while. And I don't want to be disturbed for the rest of the day. She's not back from her supper break yet. I told them to cover her. She's a bit late. And she didn't tell you where she was going? Well, I thought I saw her getting in a minicab a while ago, but I can't be certain. Well, you don't happen to remember what time... Oh, hang on. That could be her. OK, I'm going to give you a call if it isn't, right? OK, thanks. Coming! All right! All right! Don't get your knickers in it! Where is he, the bastard? Hey? Don't pretend the tosser isn't here. I've followed him here. What's going on? You bastard! What did whoa, you do to Natalie? Whoa, 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 whoa! I saw him leave the club with her, and he was in our flat the other day. I wasn't. I tried to get you last night as well. What did you do to that other girl, you vicious bastard? What other girl? All right, all right, that's enough. Let's talk this out. Right then. I saw you leave the club with Natalie. Don't deny it. I did leave with her. She asked me to walk her home. And the rest. No. I said something stupid to her about a chest. I'd just seen those pictures on the web. You bloody pervert. It was a joke. She didn't laugh. She told me to get lost and she went on by herself. And you never saw her again? No. What about Sharma? picked her up last night, didn't you? I saw you there, Annie. I couldn't get you in time. I went back to the club to see if Natalie was there. Tell her I was sorry, but she weren't. So I left. Twelve quid down the drain. What was the idea of breaking into our place? Looking for her underwear, were you? I told you, I never even did that. I never even found out where it was. Oh, yeah. Well, who was it in there the other time, then? How should I know? Oh, I'd... yeah! All right, all right. <sighs> Kirsty. Is there anything else you can think of that Natalie and Sharma had in common? Anything at all? No. They weren't even friends. They just met each other when they were in the clinic. Clinic? Why were they in a clinic? Um, I'm sorry to bother you. My colleague mentioned dogs, and I suddenly remembered what you said about that previous case when you were on the ward yesterday. Yes. Yes, the girl had quite extraordinary lacerations. When was this? About a month ago. I believe she ran some kennels. One of the dogs had gone berserk, she said. I was able to avoid any permanent scarring to the breast. Not that she had much of a one. You know, these horsey types. The file might still be kicking around here somewhere. Um, could be up in the records section. I won't be a moment. Thanks. so cooperative. Of course, you don't have much choice. That look I gave you will keep the nervous system nicely paralyzed for a little longer. It's also weak enough to be quite undetectable to your sensitive friend. I was hoping you'd take the bait about my kennel story. But no matter. I've been looking for another suitable subject. And you certainly fit the bill. Now that you've seen the x-rays, you know, of course, that the incubus embryos are grown in silicon breast implants. 
I like to keep up with the times. I imagine you've guessed that I already lost one somewhere from a previous host. And I couldn't find where it had wandered away to. What the hell is this? Unfortunately, they grow much faster than I'd expected. They yearn for human blood, you see. Hunger for it. Then came Natalie. Although I was keeping watch on her, I wasn't expecting the first one to break free when she went home that night. But her x-ray told me the second was soon to follow. So naturally, I had to make sure I was there to collect it when it did. Making myself scarce as quickly as possible. And I was able to retrieve the other one from where it had concealed itself when it first emerged. and get away before being noticed. You didn't say you wanted to, I had to keep a closer watch on the other girl. I knew she'd be next. When I'd collected both of them, I even called an ambulance to take her to hospital. I've got four of them now. They're still growing, quite rapidly. The very scent of human blood sends them into a feeding frenzy. Soon they'll be old enough to release into the community. Then the fun really starts. But first, it's your turn. I've got them all ready for you. Looks like it's time for this. Don't worry, there'll be no pain. You'll just go to sleep, and this will all seem like a nasty dream. You can say that again. It's over. Instruments can be so dangerous, can't they? Oh dear, you're bleeding. soon be unconscious. It's no good fighting it. You're just what my babies need. Fresh meat. Yeah. Well, here's the marinade.
I thought nine out of ten preferred whiskers. See the penguins in there. Penguins? They look stupid. That's right. That's why we love them. I'm going over there. Don't go too far. Hmm. See, it's not so bad. I spoke to Mary Truegood today. She's decided to leave the ministry and move in with her friend at the kennels. I think it's love. <laughs> I hope they have lots of puppies. Well, at least you won't have to put up with Black's constant sniping at women priests. True. Where did he go, anyway? Did you find out? No. Who knows? Maybe it's just one of life's strange mysteries. It's the Reverend Malcolm Potter from St. Mark's. Oh, no. He says something seems to be gnawing at the woodwork in the transept. Heaven shield us from feeble-minded lunatics. What does he think it is? An escaped tiger? I told him you were still recovering Shh. from... It was only a simple cyst removal. There's no need to issue daily bulletins. Hello, Malcolm. Stephen Collins has resigned. They've hurt him. He's going to talk. Give us a price. Uh, hang on. What's he offering? How long have I worked for you? Long enough to know never to try threatening me. State of Play concludes tomorrow at nine on BBC One. There's more strange next week at the later time of 10.20 and more sinister supernatural happenings after the news on BBC One in our Saturday night movie premiere at Stigmata at 10.30.